So welcome to Numerical Methods. In uh, today's session, we will give a very short introduction uh, on control variates, a technique for variance reduction. And I also have a small application in the Black-Scholes model and the Monte Carlo simulation of a Black-Scholes model. So the main idea is really easy. Yeah? So there's not much to discuss uh, and I only have two slides here. So we are in the situation that we have a random variable X, for example, the payoff of some option generated from a Monte Carlo simulation. And we would like to uh, calculate a Monte Carlo approximation of this uh, expectation of the random variable X. Yeah? So we are interested in the Monte Carlo approximation. And going back to our definition, where we consider a sequence of IID uh, random variables Xi and take the time average, so the average over this uh, sequence, and we know that this converges to the expectation of X, given that every Xi has the same distribution as X. So this is the Monte Carlo method. Assume that we do not have an analytic formula for expectation of X, so we have to do the Monte Carlo simulation, but there is maybe another random variable, Y, which is somewhat similar to X. And if we now for this other random variable Y, consider a sequence of pairs, xi, yi. So this is a sequence of i, i, d pairs, xi, yi, having the same distribution as the tuple xy. So we can perform a Monte Carlo approximation of any function of x and y, yeah? function in these two arguments. And assume that in addition for y, the expectation is known analytically. So assume that we know mu y, the expectation of y, that is also the expectation of yi, because they have all the same distribution. So this is known analytically. Okay. Then let's do a Monte Carlo approximation of a slightly different random variable. Let's do a Monte Carlo approximation of a random variable Z, which depends on a parameter C. And I define Z as X minus Z times Y minus mu Y for some constant C which we will choose later or which we will just guess. Okay, then I can approximate this random variable Z or Z of C, yeah? for the fixed C, it's the random variable Z, by a sequence of IID random variables Zi, which are just defined as the same function of Xi and Yi. So we can approximate Z by this sequence Zi. So what's the expectation of Z? So the expectation of Z is Z is a function of X and Y is the expectation of X minus, so expectation is a linear operator, C times expectation of y minus mu y, and this last part here is zero. So the expectation of z is the expectation of x. So we have found another Monte Carlo approximation. So we now consider the Monte Carlo approximation of z, and we have found another Monte Carlo approximation which also approximates the expectation of X. 
and maybe the other um, uh, Monte Carlo approximation. So taking the random samples ZI. So recall that if I talk here about a sequence of IID random variables, when we apply it, we take one sample pass omega. So it is, it's a sequence of random numbers. So maybe taking this sequence of ZIs, uh, it has better properties when converging to the expectation of X. So actually what is happening here? Uh, so maybe a small remark. Uh, let's draw the remark here. Let's have a small remark here. So if the constant C is one, now then what we do is the random variable Z is X minus Y plus mu Y, okay? So now assume that Y is very similar to X. For example, maybe assume that uh, Y is equal to X. So what you do is you subtract the random variable and you add the analytic solution. Yeah. Okay, so now we do not know the expectation. We do not know the analytic uh, expectation uh, for uh, of X. So we cannot subtract the X and add the analytic one. So we subtract something which is very similar and add the analytic solution. So we replace randomness by analytic solution. Okay, so that's the very simple main idea. So question. You know that the convergence of the Monte Carlo method depends on the variance of the random variable we are approximating. So what is the variance of Z compared to the variance of X? Yeah, so this section is called variance reduction. Can we maybe choose the constant C so the variance of Z is smaller? No, because then this method will converge faster. Okay, so the variance of this random variable Z is the variance of X minus C, Y minus mu Y. Okay, so at this, it's a quadratic form. So this is the variance of X minus two times covariance x c y minus mu y. So this is two times c, the covariance of x and y, plus c times the variance of y, uh, c squared, c squared the variance of y. Okay, so this is a polynome, yeah, a quadratic form in c. So I can find the minimum of this expression. So which is the constant C that minimizes this expression? And note that for C equal to zero, you have variance of X. So if you minimize this expression, you get either the same variance or a better one. So there's nothing to lose. So if you do not minimize it, if you just guess it, it can be that you have a wrong guess, yeah? but minimizing, you should get something which is equal or better. So what is the variance of this uh, random variable Z? So we already calculated this. The variance is uh, this expression here, variance of X minus 2C variance of covariance X and Y plus C squared variance of Y. Taking the first derivative, this will be minus two times covariance of X and Y plus two times C variance of Y. So let's write this here. So D by DC of this is minus two times covariance X, Y plus C variance of Y. 
Okay, so if I put this to zero, because I would like to find the minimum, uh, then we see that uh, the solution is C star equals covariance of Y divided by variance of, uh, covariance XY divided by variance of Y. Okay, and you also see that there is the case where we do not gain anything if C star is zero, if, for example, the covariance of X and Y is zero. No? So if the covariance of X and Y is zero, so they have nothing in common, then the optimal solution is C equals zero, which means that Z is equal to X and we do not reduce any variance. Yeah? We, we cannot reduce anything if there's nothing in common. So, uh, for covariance xy equal to zero, uh, we find c star equal to zero, and there is no gain in variance reduction. Okay, but in all other cases, the C star is an improvement. In all other cases, the C star is an improvement. So we now call this additional thing which we remove uh, or, or, or which we, uh, by which we modify the random variable, we call it a control variant. And we call uh, the random variable Z, uh, so including the control variant, the controlled random variable. Okay, so that's all, that's uh, variance reduction by control variants. Uh, for example, you sample a payoff of an option or you sa sample the, the value function of a financial product and then you augment this and sample another random variable, you know, side by side, putting the omega in the, in, in, in the original payoff and the omega in the control. Yeah? And then instead of taking the expectation of your original random variable, you take the expectation of the controlled random variable. So let's do a small example. Consider a Black Scholes model. Yeah? So we have a Black Scholes model here. So a Black Scholes model which uh, simulates some uh, stock S. Yeah? So we have DS is rs dt plus sigma s dw and there is a numerator involved here so there is uh, dn is rn dt okay so at some place here i need a numerator created by this so assume that I would like to calculate this somewhat exotic uh, payoff. So we have here a somewhat exotic payoff function. Yeah, so how does this look like? So this exotic payoff function uh, looks like this. It's uh, zero up to a point K my, K1. Then up to from a point K2, yeah, it looks like the payoff of a call option. So it's linear here. Yeah? And in between, it's just the quadratic function connecting zero and the point S minus K2. Yeah? So it's, it looks like this. So piecewise, three parts, linear, zero, linear, yeah? slope one, and a quadratic uh, term inside. And I do not know an analytic formula for this, yeah, because I do not know how to handle the quadratic part. Yeah? So maybe you can do it, but uh, uh, I don't, I'm, I'm maybe now too lazy. Yeah? Okay, so um, what's maybe a good control variant? Yeah? So this is just a guess. So this thing is very similar to a call option. So let's take the classic payoff of the call option as our control. So this here is our control payoff 
from which we will contract, construct the random variable z. And for that one, we know an analytic solution. So for the payoff maximum s minus k1, we know an analytic solution. Okay, to illustrate the situation, maybe I have plotted it here. Yes, I have plotted it here. So the green one is uh, the control here. Okay, so maybe that should be on the slide green. And the red one is the one which we are interested in. And there are two parameters, K1, which is the strike of the classical payoff and K2, which is the point where our somewhat exotic payoff connects back to this payoff. Yeah, and you can move this here and have different payoffs for K1 and K2. Okay, so for given constants K1 and K2, we like to value this payoff. Okay, so my control is here. This is the control payoff for which we have an analytic solution by the Black Scholes formula. Okay, so we have something similar, which has a lot in common. Yeah? So there should be a high covariance, uh, which has a lot in common with the original one. And we know an analytic formula. So what's a, a good choice for the constant C? Maybe we just guess it, C equals one. Yeah? Uh, the optimal solution is not maybe one. I don't know. Yeah? Guess to, it, it, it depends. And, um, but maybe the guess is already okay. Let's try this in a small computer experiment. So you see that the method uh, actually works. Okay, and I see there's a, a question in the chat. Do we have a function to calculate the covariance? And that should be answered actually by this little experiment because yes, there is. So let's call this Monte Carlo Black Scholes exotic payoff control variate experiment. So a very long name, so we don't get conflicts with other names here. Uh, I like to have a Black Scholes model, a Monte Carlo simulation of a Black Scholes model. So let's uh, have some uh, test parameters here. So the initial value of the stock should be one. The risk-free rate uh, should be 5%. Uh, so this is just uh, for testing here, 5%. Uh, we have a volatility of the, uh, the Uh, of the Black Scholes model, which is maybe say 20%, then we need to do a Monte Carlo simulation. So we need an Euler scheme and let's take uh, a time discretization uh, having say uh, five time steps uh, starting in zero. So the number of time steps is an integer and uh, each time step should be uh, say 0.5. Uh, so half a year, yeah, so we can use, oh, let's take 0.1, yeah, so it goes to five years, we have small time steps. Uh, then we need an Euler scheme of this, yes, and now we need a Monte Carlo simulation, so how many sample paths should we use? Let's take one million sample paths and we do a Monte Carlo simulation that needs a seed for the random number generator. So let's take some seed. That is our Monte Carlo simulation. Now the financial product, it has a maturity. So the simulation goes to five years. So let's take this last point as our um, maturity. And we have two strikes, yeah? uh, K1. So this here is our K1 and K2. Uh, let's take the first one in one and the next uh, uh, next one in 1.6. Uh, you can you can change these later if you like to play around. Okay, so I like to test the method with these uh, parameter. So uh, I need a Black Scholes uh, model. So now I use our framework. So where we can uh, 
have a class that calculates us the drift and everything for the uh, for the um, Euler scheme. So initial value, risk-free rate, volatility, yeah, the parameters. Oh, there's a typo, yeah. So maybe that parameter should be named like this. Um, and here he likes to close this model. What 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 what, what did I want? Ah, the, the typo. So um, I always include here the wrong, the wrong model. So now you have to be careful. Yeah, there are different implementations of the Black Scholes model, a Fourier transform implementation, and uh, say a Monte Carlo implementation, and sometimes he imports the wrong, the wrong implementation. So now we need um, time discretization. So there is a simple class which provides us with this time discretization, given that we have an initial value, the number of time step and a delta T. So then from this, uh, so number of time steps, what is he complaining here? Uh, Oh, there is a typo, huh? the office missing here. Maybe the office is nice. So then from that, we create the Brown in motion. Okay, so there are different Brown in motion implementations. We take one here with Mesen Twister. Uh, time discretization is given number of factors. This model has just one factor, so one Brown in motion, number of paths, yeah, and the seat. So number of paths is with a plural S here, okay, and the seat. So um, that one now. So next one is the Euler scheme. We need the Euler scheme of this model using this Brownian motion. So the Euler scheme will create a Monte Carlo process which simulates our stock. Yeah? So we have new Euler scheme. Euler scheme from process model, and this takes a model, which is the Black Scholes model, and the stochastic driver, which is our Brownian motion. So now we have the Euler scheme, and we are done in creating the Monte Carlo simulation of S of T. So now we have the S of, of T. Um, I would like to have a valuation model, which will say, provide this in a nice uh, function. So this is called Monte Carlo asset model. So that was, if you remember, just the wrapper which wraps the stochastic process function, get stochastic process in get asset. Yeah, it's just a renaming. But so the product can uh, implement against this interface. So, and that it. So now we can ask the Black Scholes model for stuff. Yeah? So uh, let's perform here the valuation directly in the code. So I need a random variable, a random variable which is the underlying, the underlying asset. This should be S of capital T. So that the Black Scholes model get asset value at the time, at which time at maturity, and which asset we take asset index zero because there is just a single asset S of T. So um, an exception can happen. Let's add this here and continue. So that's the underlying. What else do we need? If we go back to the slides, you see that here we also need the numerair here and here. So this payoff is multiplied with the numerair ratio and this payoff here is multiplied with the numerair ratio. So the expectation of X and expectation of Y is the value of the financial product. So we need the numerair. And we need the numerair at maturity, so at payment. So let's ask the model here for the numerair at maturity. 
And we need the numerator at the evaluation point, which is zero. So let's take the numerator at the initial time. Okay, so now we have S of capital T, N of capital T and S of zero. So then we can uh, calculate the classical payoff. So the uh, payoff of a call option. So the payoff of a call option is the underlying minus the strike. And this is strike one, yeah? so S of K1. So I'm now doing here our queen part. So that one and maximum of this and zero. This should be multiplied with the numerator in evaluation point or, or divided by the numerator at payment time and then multiplied with the numerator at evaluation. Yeah? So the, the order doesn't matter, but maybe this looks a little bit nicer. So divided by payment time multiplied with evaluation time. Okay, and that is the payoff, discounted payoff. Or maybe I, I do it like this. This is the payoff and then the value of the plane call is the payoff divided by the numerator multiplied with the numerator. So now we have the expectation of this. So this is our random variable y. Yeah? So this is the random variable y. The expectation of this is the value of the classical call. So let's maybe print this value of plain call. Okay, so we can print this. So the expectation of this guy, so is what we like to see is the value of the plain call option. Uh, maybe just check that my implementation is correct and also calculate the analytic uh, valuation. So the analytic value. So the value of the plain call analytic, we get it from an analytic formula, namely the Black-Scholes formula. So where's the Black-Scholes formula for an option, option value? So initial stock value, this is our initial value, risk-free rate, volatility option maturity, it's called maturity in our case, and strike, it's called strike one. And this is a call option. So, and maybe let's print this. So this here is analytic, and this is Monte Carlo. So it's just that I see that my implementation here is uh, correct. Ooh, doing this live coding, uh, I'm a bit afraid that I did a stupid mistake. Maybe you can, oops, what is wrong? Index out of bounds. So this looks like I have not enough time steps. Huh? So you see here, I don't know, do I, do, do I need more time steps here? Oh yes, yes, it goes to five. So if it goes to five, uh, you know, then I actually need 50 time steps, right? I need 50 time steps to get to five years. Okay. So maybe it's not so nice to have so many time steps. Let's take one year time step, five time steps. Actually for this example, we just need the final value and one time step would be enough. So looks good. We get 29% as the option value. Uh, looks also nice with the analytic one. Uh, and maybe one small remark, since this value here is a, a random variable, we can ask this random variable a lot of other stuff. 
Yeah. So, uh, for example, you can ask for the sample variance or you can ask for the standard error. So, I can now print here uh, from this random variable, I would like to also see the standard error. No? And maybe let's print it nicely and have a plus minus here. So, this is Unicode B1, I believe. Let's check. Uh, so this here is just the Unicode for this plus minus sign here. And now we can also print out the standard error. And you see it's five times 10 to the minus four approximately. So uh, the third digit or the fourth digit makes the difference. Hmm? Yeah, it looks, looks good. Now build the control variant. Yeah? So going back, yeah, we implement now the red payoff uh, and uh, the control. Yeah? So now we like, so actually we don't, don't like to value the European option. We like to value this payoff and we build the control variant. So the payoff which we are actually interested is, is this exotic payoff. So what's this di exotic uh, payoff? It's this one here. Yeah. So there is now K1 and K2 involved. So how does the exotic payoff look like? So the exotic payoff looks if the underlying is larger or smaller than strike two. So if I take underlying minus strike two, I have different behavior if this is smaller than zero or if it's larger than zero. And this here is a random variable. And these random variables have many functions like add or sum. Yeah? And there's also a function which is called choose. And you see that you can apply two arguments, the value if the this random variable here is positive and the value if this random variable is negative. So I take this function choose value if trigger is non-negative. If S minus K2 is positive, I would like to have the normal payoff of the call. Otherwise, I would like to have S minus K1 squared. So this is the payoff of the call squared. And then in addition, it is here divided. So it's this squared divided by K2 minus K1. So divided by K2 minus K1. So that's our strange exotic payoff. This is the one which we like to price, yeah? our exotic payoff. So let's uh, print this. Uh, here, uh, the same way we printed the other payoff. So value of exotic payoff in Monte Carlo is now this payoff. So we have to calculate the payoff multiplied with the numeria value exotic is exotic payoff divided by the numeria multiplied with the numeria. So this is this multiplication here, which we are now doing. So, and let's print this guy out and also the standard error. So maybe I print here another line. empty line to make it a little bit more beautiful. Hmm. And going back to, uh, oh, this says something wrong. Uh, oh, oh, sorry, the squared is inside this bracket, no? So we choose, we choose either the 
payoff or the payoff squared, okay? So the bracket was not close at the right boundary. And you see the value which we get is 26%. So it's a little bit smaller. And this is also clear if you look at this picture. It has to be smaller because there's a region where we get less money. Yeah, So it's smaller. And the Monte Carlo error, so the standard error is also 10 to the minus 4. So now control variant is find a control such that you can replicate this expectation so and, uh, that you get the, uh, an approximation for the expectation with a smaller uh, standard error. So now next thing is to build the control. So I just use C equals zero. Is my uh, C equals one. It's just my guess yeah, because the two are so similar. Let's take just one. Uh, and maybe sometimes control variants are just about guessing. Yeah? And construct a control. So the control is a random variable. So exotic controlled. And this random variable is now um, What is it? It's the exotic payoff. So it's the exotic value. Okay. So this is the X, which we are calculating, minus the plain one. So the thing which has a lot in common. So minus the value of the plain call plus the analytic solution. So value analytic, where is it? Value analytic, there. Okay, so actually it is this, I subtract the plain call minus the value analytic solution. So that's what we had written and we multiplied with the C. Okay, so this here is Z is equal x minus bracket open y minus mu y times c. Now let's look at the value of our control. So I just change here what I print. You know, the standard error and the average of the control. And I'll well, keep fingers crossed. So we get the same or similar expectation, but it's claimed that it's much more accurate, 10 to the minus five. So we have improved the standard error, yeah, which is actually the square root here of the variance involved, by a factor of 10. So the variance has improved by a factor of 100. This translates to uh, 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 100 times the number of passes that would be needed to generate this result. Yeah? So this is a big improvement, a very big improvement. Uh, so to finish this section, yeah, I have maybe five more minutes. Uh, I just did a guess here for the C. And we already had a question from you uh, in the audience. Oh, I also see you spotted the mistake with the time. Thanks. <laughs> we already had a question here. Um, can we calculate, do we have a method to calculate the covariance of the random variables? So actually in the slides here on the method, we need the covariance of x and y. Okay, so if we don't, uh, if we are not able to calculate the expectation of x, I'm likely not able to calculate the expectation, the variance of x, and I'm likely not uh, able to calculate the covariance of x and y analytically. But maybe we can cheat a little bit, and if you do not have a guess for uh, 
C, then we may use a Monte Carlo estimate for the corresponding variances and covariances. And let's try this. We have everything at hand. So there's here a 5.4, yeah? and maybe I get an even slightly better C here if we do the following. So what do we need? We need the covariance of X and Y. Yeah? So actually I need the expectation of X minus mu X. So let's take the expectation of X minus mu, mu X. So this is X is our exotic payoff minus the, expect, minus the expectation. I can just write average here if you like. So this is x minus mu x. Now multiply the sky with y minus mu y. So this is the value of the plane call minus the average. Actually here we know the analytic one, but let's do it fully numerical. So, and then the expectation of this is the covariance, okay? So let's call this double covariance x, y. And the variance of y is just the value of the plane call. There's a function for this. So and here you see why it's nice to work with this object random variable. Now you can implement stuff which we maybe need from time to time. And we can have a guess for our C. Yeah, we can calculate our C according to this rule. So this is maybe not the correct C because it is a Monte Carlo approximation of the C. And maybe you can also think that it's maybe not so nice to use the same Monte Carlo simulation here as in the control. This may give a slight bias, yeah? also a problem in regression methods, but actually it is uh, quite okay. So this bias will go away if pass passes uh, are chosen high enough. Okay, and it was a 4.39, yeah? and now it's a 4.36, so it has become a little better. Okay, so you can uh, even uh, uh, use this trick to get a nice guess for the constant uh, C. But often, uh, well, a straight guess is, uh, is uh, a big improvement. So that was um, control variates. So one last thing I'd like to show you is, uh, do we actually know that this here is the correct value? It could be that maybe this control does something bad and the expectation is not correct. Yeah? So it is, yeah? and we also proved it, uh, but uh, maybe we can just check. So you see, this is a 0 0.2605, and he's claiming that he's at the fourth or five digit, so uh, already correct. So this five here should be correct, and this one one is not correct. Yeah. So, um, and. You can of course prove this or check this by just increasing here the number of passes yeah? and then check that convergence happens. But I have a small um, other improvement. So here in this uh, Monte Carlo simulation, I used uh, five time steps, each with one year. So actually there was this little mistake. Yeah? We first used 50 and we didn't use uh, enough. So. But here in this application, I can just use one time step running to five years, which makes this, uh, if you now run it, this Monte Carlo integration, a one dimensional Monte Carlo integral because there is just a single normal distributed random variable. Yeah? And if this is a one dimensional one, then I could just use the Halton sequence uh, as random number generator. Yeah? So, I copied this here for me. So here, let's create a different Brownian motion. So I create a Brownian motion now using the Halton sequence. And there's the class Brownian motion from random number generator. And I use the Halton sequence as the random number generator. 
And you know, the Horton sequence as a quasi random number generator has a much better convergence rate. It is instead of one divided by square root of n, one divided by n. Yeah, so log n divided by n. So let's use the Horton sequence and check our result uh, again. So you see the Monte Carlo seed is now here yellow. Yeah, it doesn't enter into the calculation. And you see the result is 0.26522. And this here is still the Monte Carlo sample variance. Actually, the Holton ones, this is the square root, the Holton one is 10 to the minus 10. Yeah, it's much better. And you see, actually, the, the result here converges to the correct result. Yeah? So that is a small uh, illustration that actually the method gives you also the correct uh, value for the expectation. Yeah? So we have convergence. So, but going back to what we just did, you see with this small control here, so that was the calculation of the control. Okay, you get a factor of 10 in the standard error, so a factor of 100 in the variance reduction. That's it for uh, control variance. Thank you. And that's it for today.